Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game to the Comp video, we have two interesting pieces of news to go through. The first of which is AMD's FreeSync 2. That's right, they have actually released an update to their popular FreeSync technology. It came with a little fanfare, but it does indeed have a few very important updates concerning HDR. We'll get to that in a moment. And then we'll focus the remainder of the video on their Ryzen range of processors. Because a couple of individuals, both Justin and Rod, have actually sent me a couple of very interesting links concerning the processors and more specifically they give a lot more context to some of the rumors that i've already covered but we'll go more into that in just a moment let's first of all get the quicker of the two pieces of news out of the way and that would be hdr and freesync 2 so first of all what is freesync and what is hdr so freesync is the ability or rather is a display technology from amd and what it does is it eliminates the tearing that you can get if you disable VSync while also reducing latency which is associated with having VSync enabled. In other words, it is, I guess the best way of putting it, is the best of both worlds. High dynamic range, on the other hand, is a term you've probably heard a painful amount, especially if you have looked anything into the PS4, or rather the PS4 Pro, High dynamic range is the ability for the device to output a wide gamut of colors. That would be better brightness, better contrast, and better saturation. In theory, this will allow scenes to pop better. For example, if you have a sunlit vista or a sunset over the ocean, or perhaps one of my favorite examples, a space battle, where distant stars can sometimes become overpowered by the nearer stars and this can basically make neb the nebulas excuse me look rather flat and when you start adding in explosions for space battles and all the other bits and bobs which games of course will um, become infamous for then it can look a bit mm, uh, it doesn't look quite how the artist envisioned it when they were creating the the uh, the scene the problem with hdr is that it's very difficult to do it justice with words and really to experience it if you've not already done so you have to actually sit in front of a screen but enough of me talking that up what actually is FreeSync 2? in a nutshell it is their attempt of fixing the problem with HDR and that is tone mapping basically HDR uh, screens typically rely heavily on tone mapping which according to AMD can add significant amounts of latency to gaming how much latency obviously does depend upon the screen but you can be looking up to about a hundred milliseconds which is absolutely dreadful now typically of course those displays are going to primarily be sitting in your living room and will be often used for tv shows or movers so what amd have done is try to eliminate tone mapping by removing the display tone mapping out of the equation what it does instead is it puts those duties onto the gpu itself this means uh, for those of you who do not know tone mapping is the pretty very well, actually very important task of actually mapping a specific color that a game engine wants the GPU to display to a specific color that your screen can display. I'll give you an example. This is a very silly example, but let's say that you have a um, full color image and your screen that you're displaying it on is black and white. Well, the screen is simply incapable of showing color, right? Well, the same thing it can be said for HDR images when they are mapped down to a simple... Um, you know standard dynamic range image or even certain hdr because obviously there are different technologies of hdr some have wider ga uh, color gamuts and all of that stuff so still tone mapping some uh, most of the time does have to uh, take place and therefore if you can put that burden onto the gpu theoretically you should get lower um lower latency better frame rates well at least perceived better frame rates because it's going to feel more responsive and you should also get much, much better color reproduction if you are, once again, running on a HDR display. Obviously, for folks who have an interest in investing into a HDR display, that might prompt you to wait a little bit 
because ultimately we don't know how well this technology works. We can read the PR literature, but as always, PR literature and reality, plus as well different manufacturers, will no doubt have different levels of quality with their display, just as always. So, you know, we'll have to just watch this space. Anyway, let's focus on Ryzen. So, as I mentioned, Rod and Justin are, once again, uh, not include their, uh, their last names, have actually messaged me over a whole bunch of stuff. Now, one thing which is very, very interesting, um, that a overclocker, his name, by the way, is um, Buildzoid, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and apparently he has sources which have given him information. He's a very well-known overclocker. He uses like liquid nitrogen and st tries to set records and all that stuff. Now, I'll give you the too long read of what he's, uh, I guess, the synopsis. He has hinted that if you want to overclock Ryzen, then the max speed you're going to get on average is about 4.4 gigahertz. But he didn't necessarily tell us what samples you're going to be getting with that uh, uh, in terms of you know what what percentage of cpus are going to hit that clock speed whether this is going to just be the very high-end versions of ryzen which as some people might remember there are supposedly and i stress that supposedly two different versions of the eight core processor one is the one which will basically go to the higher clock speeds and another one is a cheaper version now, the cheaper version supposedly is going to have lower clock speeds out of the gate. I'm assuming they're going to be 3.4 gigahertz, but also it's going to clock slower, whereas the high-end version is going to have higher clock speeds out the gate. I don't know what they are, so for the sake of this video, I'll give the, you the, uh, the example of 3.7 gigahertz and will clock higher. Now, the other thing he said is that Ryzen is going to be cheap. He did not imply, uh, so he did not give an exact price, but one thing he did say is that because the motherboards require a lot fewer traces than, let's say, uh, Intel's X99 platform, just simply because it has fewer memory control, um, sorry, memory pathways, because obviously it has so many more traces because of the uh, quad uh, quad channel, excuse me, memory inside of the X99 boards. This not only means that the boards are cheaper, but the actual Ryzen CPU, in theory, will also be cheaper because it has to have a less robust memory controller. However, what pricing and what cheap is, is down to your imagination. He also said that the uh, six and four core variants will not clock much higher, if at all higher, than the Ryzen 8 core. However, most of this stuff is down to your interpretation and whether you want to believe him. However, there are a couple of very, very interesting posts which have popped up concerning the Canard PC um, benchmarks. Now, these are down to versions of Ryzen. As folks probably know as a cpu is being manufactured in other words as they're testing it and they're basically refining it they will create different revisions of silicon now the idea behind this is that let's say in one revision they might have it's almost like a proof of concept so for example the clock speed might be 2.4 gigahertz and basically they're just trying to see okay does it work what issues are there with the silicon you know um you know what's what's fallen over what do we need to improve and then what they'll do is basically slowly bring up the processor, slowly bring up the processor and work out any kinks. Because ultimately, because they're designing such complex machinery, I mean, these things have millions and millions upon millions upon millions of transistors per core. And that's not including the cache and all the other bits and pieces which go into making a processor work. There's inevitably going to be problems as they're creating the silicon. Despite the fact that a lot of it is actually done uh, automatically via computers. Um, obviously, they'll design things using the requisite programs, but they still need to do some stuff manually, and then they still need to bring it up. My point being that that means inherently there will be bugs in the silicon as they're producing things. The owner of the website Semi Accurate believes that currently Ryzen is on the A3 stepping, or just about to have the A3 stepping. Now, what that means is it's probably about as close to retail as we can possibly get. That is very interesting based upon the launch dates of Zen. 
it's possible that if they are going to launch it, let's say it's CES 2017, ultimately we don't know, it could be a paper launch, or they could launch it within, let's say, the next month, and it will be available in very limited quantities, so it's going to be very nice to get price gouged, I imagine. However, getting back to the main point of this, Canard PC was supposedly testing with A0. Now, this is very interesting because from what I've heard, the early versions of the Silicon had a couple of very nasty bugs in them. Although we don't know all of the technical details, one of them is an IPC bug, and this supposedly relates to the MicroOps cache. And there's another one which is a problem to do with the SMT, the Simultaneous Multi-Thread Implementation. So, despite these bugs, the features were enabled, but uh, according to this information, they were, and I quote, um, hindering performance by an unknown percentage. So that's kind of not great. And in fact, the AM4 platform itself has some issues. Uh, for example, it doesn't detect SSD sometimes, and sometimes doesn't detect appropriate GPUs. And another issue, which I've heard myself, is that the Ryzen memory controller has issues when it comes to system stability with memory speeds over 2400 MHz. I actually reported this bug a while ago. Uh, can't remember how long ago, but maybe about a month to month and a half. And that was actually a post on a forum and afterwards the post got taken down by the individual who made it. Obviously he kind of panicked a bit because he didn't actually mean for it to go viral, or, although I'm not really sure why he didn't think that people would pick up on it, but there you go. Um, and basically that means that the clock speeds of Ryzen, despite the fact that they are saying that they can run up to DDR4 2666 megahertz, the clock speed they're using is up to 2400 megahertz. Now what does all of that mean in Too Long Didn't Read in simple English? Well, honestly, it means that most likely Ryzen currently is not running on all cylinders. This was A0 stepping, however, and that's important because the A0 stepping has the bugs, whereas the AM4 issue and the Ryzen memory controllers, it's not known whether they are, are in the samples which were shown off at New Horizon. We just you know, have to guess on those. So what does all of that mean in reality? Well, it means that the benchmarks we've seen, as I've said all along, are probably only an indication of what the final performance of this processor is going to end up being. And this is exactly what I was saying about Vega. I was like, okay, well, it's beating Doom by like 10% at 4K with Vulcan, but that doesn't really mean much because, well, you know, we don't know what the clock speeds of Vega are. It's like if it's running at only 50% of its clock speed, obviously that's perhaps a bit of an exaggeration, but if it's only running at 50% of its clock speed, it doesn't really mean much that it's only running at 10% because we don't know what the state of the actual hardware is. Like, for example, for all we know, the HBM2 memory that was running with the CP with the GPU wasn't running at full clock speed because maybe there was memory controller issues, so they were running at like 75% of the clocks. We just don't know. And that's the issue. And we do know, of course, that with the uh with the GPU that they were showing, at least on that demo, there were supposedly massive issues with the driver when it came to um optimization. Basically, we're just using Fiji drivers. So, I'm not surprised, to be honest, that Conard PC uh, benchmarks have been turned have turned out to be old uh, samples. And honestly, I feel that they should have been a bit clearer with that. But um, hey, at least we know. And I don't think anyone really believed that that was going to be indicative of the final performance of the processor. So anyway. It is currently, as I'm recording this, 7.30ish p.m. on the 3rd of January, 2017. The reason I bring that up is because in just a few days, we won't have any ambiguities whatsoever, sir, because we shall have all of the information. Well, perhaps not all, but I'm hoping to go into, or rather exit, CES 2017 
with an understanding of what the hell's going on with Vega, what the hell is going on with Ryzen, at least in terms of the pricing or the release schedule or something. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.